Lights! This is a glow stick. And you've probably seen one before, but it's such a perfect example of chemiluminescence. Inside this glow stick, there are two main components. There is a fluid on the inside of the stick that is a combination of a solvent and a chemical called bis 246 trichloralphenyl oxalate, or TCPO for short. There's also a small glass vial inside the plastic glow stick tube, which is filled with hydrogen peroxide and a fluorescent dye. This glass vial is the thing that you actually crack open to activate the glow stick. When all of these chemicals mix, the TCPO uses energy from the hydrogen peroxide, which in turn energizes the fluorescent dye, allowing it to glow. Now the thing that I love the most about this reaction is that it's powered by hydrogen peroxide. And there is another reaction that I love so much that is also fueled by hydrogen peroxide, and that is elephant toothpaste. So after learning how this reaction works, I was really curious, could we combine chemiluminescence and elephant toothpaste to make glowing elephant toothpaste? Well, to find out, I hit up my good friend Cole Creighton, who's a chemist. It's a bit dependent on the chemical kinetics because the timing of those two reactions are going to depend on each other based on how much hydrogen peroxide or catalyst is going to be left in either reaction. It's just a matter of making sure that you have enough of that hydrogen peroxide to facilitate both of the reactions at the same time without one limiting the other. Got it. So if we use our standard 35%, then in theory, I could basically just add a bunch of glow sticks and voila, I have glow in the dark elephant toothpaste. Basically, like Legos, but with chemistry. I'm gonna give it a shot and we'll see what happens. Cool. Now this all made perfect sense to me. So I bought a bunch of glow sticks on Amazon, harvested them for their glow juice, and added 150 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, some soap, and 60 milliliters of glow. After our talk, I was pretty hyped and confident, and then here's what happened when I added the potassium iodide catalyst. All right, so here we go. Oh, it like killed it. So as you can see, it totally 100% failed. Did not work at all. It literally masked the glow. Like it went from glowing to just completely black. Now this is the same catalyst that we use for all of our elephant toothpaste experiments. And so what I think happened is that the potassium iodide oxidized so dark that it masked the fluorescent dye, which essentially put out the glow. However, we're still in luck. There are other catalysts that we can use for the elephant toothpaste experiment that don't have this masking effect, and that would be baker's yeast. So here's the reaction with yeast instead of potassium iodide. Oh my god, oh it my works. Gosh. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. Now we're in business. Next, I wanted to scale this up to the size of a five gallon bucket. So we used two gallons of 35% hydrogen peroxide and 250 glow sticks. I was really curious about how cost effective it would be if I would just mix all the raw chemicals together to get the glow or if we should buy glow sticks. And it turns out that it is significantly cheaper to buy a bunch of glow sticks. So for this bigger test, I thought it'd be really fun to invite over my friend Merrick Hanna to make some TikToks in the process. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make the yeast part of this. I am taking this stirring very seriously. <laughs> so what are the odds that this spontaneously combusts in the old eye? Probably like 96%, roughly speaking. All right, so that's 4,000 right there. This is like our live bucket. So this is like the most dangerous part about this now. All right, so here's the fun part. I like got a little pan with a dye over there. Wow. So I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna mix all these together. <laughs> it's like cartoon radioactive sludge. Here we go. Pour it all in. All right, take a step back. Let's go. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> it's so bright. It is incredibly bright. <laughs> it smells strange. That smells like yeast. Wow. 
Oh, we can like high five with it. <laughs> so what are the odds that this spontaneously combusts and we all die? 100%. I would say the results exceeded expectations, and I was incredibly impressed by how long the glow lasted. Now, right around the time that we were making this video, I went on the Good Boys podcast with Todd and Brett, and I learned that Brett always wanted to be a part of one of our giant elephant toothpaste experiments. I really want to go to the next one you guys do, and that oh, was that's elephant sick. toothpaste. All throughout COVID, I was like, please, like, please let me know. And the next time that Nick comes, like, I have to be there. Like, I've been now waiting for this for like three and a half years. Knowing this, I wanted to surprise Brett, so we started planning for a much, much larger reaction. Now, I really wanted to amp up this reaction too, so we started experimenting with 50% hydrogen peroxide, which is the key ingredient in Devil's Toothpaste. I also didn't want to cut open a bunch of glow sticks, so I got in touch with a manufacturer who makes glow sticks, and they actually sold me large quantities of the glow juice. I bought 50 liters or 50,000 glow sticks worth. And because this whole experiment is glow in the dark, I thought it'd be very fitting to turn my backyard into what looks like a Burning Man installation. Also, we decided to upcycle a bunch of items from projects past to make this work. We're using our liquid nitrogen holding tank from our last David Dobrik video to now hold our hydrogen peroxide. We're also getting yet another use out of the lifeguard tower by literally cutting it in half and turning it into two dropping devices. Class, we're building one new dropping device with the wood from our baking soda rocket launcher and using our old ropes. So for this to work out, we will need 50 gallons of 50% hydrogen peroxide 100 gallons of yeast solution, and 13 gallons of glow juice. But the real challenge will be getting all of the yeast solution poured in all at once. So for this, I've called up a few of my friends. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to attempt to basically turn my backyard into the world's largest glow stick. In order to do this like really, really, really big, I needed a lot of people to help because we need to mix a lot of chemicals, we need to transport a lot of chemicals, and then the device that it basically allows us to mix all at once requires nine people. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mix a bunch of yeast. So, yeah, yeah. You don't need scissors. How you doing? Oh, that is incredibly chunky. <laughs> I can smell the juice. <laughs> and then we're going to shuttle that into the three big drums out there. <laughs> it's so heavy. So let's how many we have? Perfect. We're going to suit up into our safety gear. Because we need heads. Jesus Christ. And then all nine people are actually going to be pulling on individual ropes. And that will actually allow all of the chemicals to mix together. This is going to be very interesting. We do not know exactly what to expect, so let's get to science in, right? Whoa! Wait, why is it so deep though? <laughs> you can draw with it. <laughs> okay, we are in business, everyone. Everyone, get to your battle station. In three, two, one. Crazy, bro. Thank you so much. I'm fairly certain, I can't say this, I'm sure there's no challengers. Almost positive that this is the world's largest glow-in-the-dark elephant toothpaste experiment ever, because it's also the first. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Word. Guys, we're going to re-break the world record for the largest elephant toothpaste experiment ever. It is going to be like insanely large. And if you want to be a part of it, go to the link in my bio and pre-register today.